Hey, welcome to chapter 14. Chapter 14 is about communication. How would you feel about standing in front of a room full of a thousand people? You were on stage behind a podium, you had a microphone on, and every eye was watching you. Every ear in that whole place was waiting for the words, for the syllables, for the letters that made up those words that you were going to utter in the next 30 minutes. They were expecting to hear something from you. How would you feel? What would your emotions be like knowing that that was waiting for you? For me, that would excite me beyond words. If I knew that there was a thousand people, every time I speak in front of a group of people, I get excited. Then I get to express what, express what I'm passionate about to somebody else. That I get to communicate with people about what matters most in our lives. It excites me. It thrills me. It pumps me up. But it wasn't always this way. I used to be like more than 99% of the, the population. I was terrified, absolutely scared spitless to stand in front of any size of group of people and have to say anything. I remember being in a class and we had to do a five minute presentation each in front of 10 to 15 other people who were in our class. And we'd gone through the class almost a whole semester already together. And one of those people were actually my brother, my younger brother. But I remember skipping three classes to make sure that the, the instructor wouldn't call on me to do my presentation. I was absolutely terrified and I refused to do it. And I've worked with people who are this way and I've coached people who have been terrified, absolutely scared spitless to stand in front of any group of people or sit in front of a group of people and have to communicate something particular, in particular to them. I had a boss a few years after that, that assignment that I skipped the presentation for and he realized how important the skill of communication was going to be to me. So he basically arranged for me to do a presentation in front of a group of people. And beforehand, he helped me get ready. He helped me go over what I was going to say and how I was going to say it. But then he took me to the auditorium where the presentation was going to take place. He sat in one of the rows of chairs, made me stand on the stage behind the podium with a microphone and do my talk to just him. Talk about uncomfortable. That felt like one of the dumbest things I've ever done in my life. I never felt so stupid as I did at that moment. But I never learned as much or grew as much as I did at that moment either. I didn't realize it at the time, but that changed something in me. All of a sudden, I started the process and the journey on becoming more effective at communication. To where communication was something I looked forward to. Something I enjoyed instead of dreaded. Instead of trying to avoid it, I embraced it and I enjoyed it and I loved it. Today, once you get me up front, sometimes it's hard to get me down. It's hard to turn off the mic and, and for me to walk away because I enjoy it so much. Being able to pass on the things that we believe and the things that we know other people need to hear is such a valuable skill. And that's what this chapter is all about. Now, I'm not going to be able to go either even in this video or in the book into a lot of specific skills and tools. But here's just a couple of them. As you look around me here, it's peaceful, it's calm. We're in a, in a park-like setting. And it would be fantastic if all our communication as supervisors and managers and leaders took place in an environment like this, where it was calm, where it was peaceful, there were, where there was no interruptions, there was no distractions. I can't even hear any birds singing right now. Unfortunately, this is not where real life happens. Real life conversations, real life conflict, real life communication, especially as a leader, often happens in situations where there's lots going on. People are running, things are happening, people are calling, our phone is buzzing, someone's calling our name, someone needs something from us, there's something going on over here. That's the environment a lot of our communication takes place in. What do we do in that situation to make sure that we're going to be effective communicators? That the things that we're wanting to communicate are going to actually be passed on to the people who need to hear them. Sometimes it's just information. Other times it's conflict resolution. 
Sometimes, other times it's correcting somebody and telling them what they're not doing properly, not doing effectively or not doing correctly. In those situations, here's one of the things that has made the biggest difference for me. Grab a piece of paper and a pen ahead of time. Take five minutes. It only takes five minutes. It's not, it's not like this. I'm asking you to do something that's going to take half an hour. Take five minutes. Sit down by yourself where it's calm, where it's quiet, and go, what do I really want to communicate? What are the top three points that I want this person to take away from this conversation? And maybe there's one or two points or, or key pieces of information or key things you want to correct them on. Oh, the wind is picking up, so even here it's not completely calm. Life is never completely calm. So write these things down, that way we don't forget. Because sometimes in the heat of the conversation, when we're a little bit nervous, and they're a little bit nervous, and things are busy around us, especially a conflict situation, where we're trying to res resolve a conflict situation, it's easy to forget the things that we're really wanting to communicate, the things that we really need to say and pass on to this person. And if it's points of information we want to get across, we need to know what they are and we need to remember what they are. So if there's three points, we need to make sure they get all three exactly how we intend for them to have them. If there's 10 points, which is probably not a great number for a verbal conversation, but if it's one, two or three points, verbal is fine. But we need to write it down so we don't miss. And even have then, secondly, so firstly, first thing, you write it down, what you want to communicate. Second, if there's two or three points, have them write it down. If it's complex in any way, have them write it down so they're not going to forget. And then you can read it and know exactly what they're thinking and exactly what they heard coming out of your mouth. Often what comes out of my mouth is not what I'm hearing inside my head. What I'm thinking up here is not necessarily what comes out of here and makes its way into their ears and into their brain. Somehow, in those four areas, my brain, my mouth, their ears, their brain, something changes in the message. Write my message down and get them to write it down. If it's just one point, talk with them about it. They don't have to write it down, but just clarify afterwards. Make sure they understood what you were intending to communicate. Ask them. Ask them a couple questions about what you just said. We don't want to treat somebody like they're, like they're stupid. Say, well, tell me what I just told you. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is ask them some questions that just give you the assurance that they understand what you're passing on. And I said, especially in a conflict, conflict situation, our emotions run high, there can be tension, our heart starts to race, and our palms start to sweat often, because almost nobody enjoys conflict. So write it down. Come in prepared, and then you can be calm. Then you don't have to be thinking in the back of your mind, am I going to forget something important? You're going to cover it. Communication is one of the most important skills that an effective and successful leader will develop in themselves. Take the time to develop this skill for yourself. If you go to my website, Todd, not Todd, that's my email address. My, my website is bootsonthegroundcoaching.com, www bootsonthegroundcoaching.com. If you go there, you'll see some of the courses I offer on communication, on conflict resolution. And if you have some specific questions, that's where you go to my email, todd at bootsonthegroundcoaching.com. Todd at bootsonthegroundcoaching.com. Now, like I've explained before, Boots on the Ground Coaching is called what it's called because we've worn the tools. We've had the tool pouch on, we've worked out of a tool chest, and whatever the situation is, we've worn the tools. We know what it's like to lead men and women in trades. And so you may have some specific questions. Feel free to contact me. I will reply. You'll get a reply within 24 hours, and if it's a long, needing a longer reply, it'll take a little, I'll reply initially, but then we'll set up something further. So communicate, communicate, communicate. We know we're communicating, well, basically starting to communicate enough when we feel like we're going to throw up if we say it one more time. Communication, effective communication, is one of the most important tools you're going to be able to develop in your leadership toolbox. So, good luck. Take some time, work through the two questions at the end of this chapter, 
and look at my website and see what the opportunities are out there for you. Have a great day. Talk to you in the next chapter.